You know, like everyone, I thought, you know, to myself, why do people get sick? I mean, why does this happen to us? Why does it happen to people? And why does it seem to be so random? I mean, that's the part you can't figure out. Why? What is the randomness of of disease? You, know, you see two people in one family, and one they're both ten years older, and one gets cancer and the other doesn't. It just seems so random. I mean, I believe in God. I have my whole life. I'm a Christian, and I just thought to myself over and over. I said, "What you know? Why? Why does? Why does God create us? And then why does He give us these terrible diseases? And that's part of the problem. Thing I, I just couldn't come to terms with. You know, you watch people around you get sick. I, I watched my parents get sick. Uh, my father got dementia. You know, he kind of they kind of just slowly faded away. And um, you know, I, I, you just always think to yourself. You know, how could this be avoided? Or, or no, it can't. And then you look at your parents, um, or maybe you look at other older people in your family, you say, that's me. That's going to be me because all my family members, you know, have these same kind of diseases. So you figure that's going to be me in a few years. It, it, if nothing else, it didn't seem, it didn't seem fair. None of it seemed fair at all. You know, growing up, I was kind of, I wasn't, you know, I was I was a skinny. I ate junk food. I tell people all the time my bones are ma are made out of Coca Cola and Oreo cookies. I mean, that's what I lived on. That's the kind of garbage. I was I was kind of bullied. You know, I wasn't very strong. And um, you know, then I I got into running and uh, you know in high school and it was really my my high school co coach who. Um, said to me for the first time he said don't eat you know don't eat chips and potato chips and don't eat don't eat, drink a bunch of pop and don't eat candy and he says a bunch of junk and it won't it'll give you you know you won't have good times you'll have poor running times and that's the first time I ever made any connection between what you eat and your health I mean I just did not see any kind of connection at all and nor was one ever explained to me and uh, it wasn't, you know, the light came on, I realized it, but I'd never been, I'd never heard anything like that before. Then, you know, through the years, I, I got more health-minded, uh, you know, I actually I moved to Israel for six months, and, and uh, you know, I gave up a lot of the junk food, I gave up, I gave up soft drinks, I gave up, uh, you know, Coca-Cola, I gave up all, a lot of, a lot of junk, I mean, I stopped eating potato chips and Oreo cookies and all this crap, so that was the first step. And then I went to India, um, and because I couldn't find any meat over there at all, and none that I could really trust, and this is like back in, this is like 1980, um, I became a vegetarian, and I kind of adopted that philosophy a little bit of India, and um, I've been a vegetarian ever since. It's been over 35 years now. So um, that's it kind of moved in little stage by stage, um, but then I, eventually I found out about the real thing. So you, be, you become a vegetarian, and then you think, well, I'm going to be healthy now. And, uh, and that's it, because vegetarians are healthy. And really, m a lot of people, they eat junk foods, they eat crap, and they just don't eat well at all, and they stop eating meat, so they think that they're healthy, and they're just a vegetarian junk, f junk food eater. That's it. So, you know, I still ate eggs, and, uh, you know, I still uh, ate a lot of dairy products, and still ate fish from time to time, but I was mainly a lacto-vegetarian, so I, I drank, you know, ate dairy products and I was a vegetarian, but anyway, um, I was out on the East Coast for many years, I moved back to the Midwest to go into the bottled water business and start my own business, and um, as soon as I got back, I got real sick, and it was really bad, I mean, I don't know if it was gallstones, kidney stones, what, they never found out it what, what it was, because it was actually two years in a row, but I was in significant pain, like I'd never been in my life, and I kept thinking to myself, how could somebody who's healthy like me, on the diet I'm on, never have any eat meat, and it was almost, I, I think it was 12, 15 years then, um, how could I get sick? Well, the answers were way down the road for me, but that was the first kind of wake-up call for me to say, man, I'm not as healthy as I thought I was. And so I got sick one year, and then the next year in a row, man, it was bad. I was really, really sick the second time. And so I knew in my mind I wasn't really a healthy person. So at this point, I really got no idea how to be healthy. I think I got an idea. 
but I really got no idea. And, but I'm going to find out what it's all about. And how it came to me is pretty interesting. It's kind of, you know, I mean, this is something you would have never guessed that would have happened this way. It's nothing miraculous or anything, but it's just kind of, kind of weird how everything came together. And it came together very quickly in a short period of time. So I got this bottled water store. I'm selling bottled water by the gallon and I'm delivering it and by the five gallon. And the guy walks into my store and he says, you ever heard about, um, you know, what he called micro water? You ever heard of this micro I cluster water, you know? And I said, no, I never heard of it. He says, well, it's really alkaline and you make, make it in this machine. And he says, um, he kind of told us a little bit about it. And, uh, and then he left, he says, come by my house and um, I'll give you some of this. And so I called him up later and I went by his house in the evening and um, he gave me a couple of gallons, three or four gallons of water of what uh, was, they called, they called micro water or micro, micro cluster water. Um, I now call it ionized water. I coined the term ionized water. But that's how I got into this and that's how it all started. Uh, come going coming together for me and I mean that's that the because water is the cornerstone of health and here in my hands and I know a lot about water I know more than I knew then just water in general and I thought then I really there wasn't too much more to know about water I had no idea what this water was going to be like and this was going to be one this is really one of the most important things that ever happened to me in my entire life was going over to Don Strayer's house in the evening and picking up that water because that's how it all started I mean, this, uh, what I held in my hands at that moment, these two gallons of water, what I didn't realize, this is the healthiest substance in the world. Nothing's healthier. There's no better, no, no better substance than, than water for your, for your health. Uh, and there's no better water than ionized water. But again, I didn't know that at the time. It was a while before I really figured out what ionized water was, because nobody could really tell me. And the people selling it, it was kind of a, one of these uh, direct marketing things. They didn't know what it really was. They couldn't explain it, period. It was several months later before I really figured out what ionized water was. And it was explained to me, but <clears throat> they're talking about, they just didn't know how to explain it properly. They're talking about moving electrons and all this kind of stuff, or maybe creating electrons on one side and all this. And, and it was, it's not quite like that. But um, I was literally working one day, and suddenly it just uh, kind of came to me what this was. Um, so I'm just I'm kind of really out back in my building and working around and picking up this and that and moving all these boxes. And um, I was alone back there, and all of a sudden it dawned on me what ionized water was and how it was created and why it had a negative charge, a negative uh, oxidation reduction potential and why that was so important and why it was like Einstein in his moment of, you know, of relativity. He was, I think he was riding on a streetcar somewhere in Switzerland and it came to him. This is the same thing. It was like an epiphany. No one had explained it, but I suddenly realized how this was made, ionized water, and why it was so important and why we wanted to consume it. And after that, once I got that concept in my head, <laughs> the rest it just fell into place. It was pretty simple at that point. And in what ionized water is, it's, it's three things. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a very strong antioxidant. It's a free radical scavenger, has a negative charge. Uh, it's very alkaline. It's got very small water molecule clusters, so it's extremely hydrating and very, very detoxifying because it pushes out all the junk that doesn't belong in your body. So it pushes out toxins. Great. That's what it does. But what I learned eventually was what it does is hydrate your body, alkalize your body, a, you know, detoxify your body. Had. H A D, hydrate, alkalize, detoxify, and I re and that what that turned into me was realizing that, you know, if you do that, if you really truly do that, you'll be healthy. You'll be healthy all the time if you hydrate your body, keep it hydrated, alkalize it, and detoxify. Now, how do you do that? Well, you know, it's not just um, changing a couple things around your diet, but the, the, that's the core of health, right? So my epiphany um, didn't explain the. One of the fundamental principles of um, of the physical world, and and why things exist the way Einstein's did. But what but what mine was was you know in a way I mean 
very, in some ways more important because I realized how you can be healthy. And uh, it doesn't explain the universe or the fundamental principles of quantum mechanics, but um, this was the same type of a thing. I had this, this epiphany. Um, and, it, and it was about ionized water and that led to everything else and it was kind of at that point now I had to figure out what the equations were and, and how they work but but that was this the, that was the seminal moment that was the beginning for me and uh, and after that um, it things just kept coming in um, you know to my life I'm just the kind of person I just uh, really want to be healthy now everybody wants to be healthy I don't care who you are you want to be a healthy person I don't doesn't matter. Nobody wants to say, I'm so happy I'm sick. You know, people want to say, I've never been sick a day in my life. My father used to say it all the time, and, and it was pretty much true until he, he got into his 70s, and then he started getting sick a lot. And by the time he was in his 80s, uh, it was pretty much, um, he was okay every once in a while, and that was about it. But people want to be healthy. And um, so when I find things that are really healthy, I glom onto them. And they kept getting thrown at me during this period back in the 1990s. First the water, the next was spirulina, which they call plant plankton. And um, spirulina is a blue-green algae, technically a cyanobacteria, but uh, it's one of the two most powerful foods in the world. And I started taking it, and I'm a runner, and right away my time started dropping. I started feeling better. Uh, recovery was better. Uh, I, I realized I didn't need any other kind of protein. I didn't, I don't know if I had, I spent a fortune on all these vitamins from all these companies that you spend a fortune on and this one and that one and I had a whole cupboard. I don't even know if I finished them or just threw them out. The kind of makes your pee turn orange or some crap. I just got, I think I got rid of all of them because I realized there's nothing in spirulina that, that's not in there. So that, that was first and then I found out about chlorella. And I started taking chlorella, and that's a green algae, and that's the most powerful food in the world. So now I had two, and uh, of, of, uh, two of the most powerful foods in the world, that actually what turned out to be the second component of my health protocol, we'll get into that later, but those are the two that I had, spirulina and chlorella, and I realized I don't need any other kind of protein, so I stopped eating you know, eggs and fish and dairy, and I already stopped eating meat. You know, my health improved tremendously, and I wasn't unhealthy, but, I mean, things really turned around for me tremendously, you know, significantly after that. So I never really had a health challenge specifically, like I had cancer and I cured it, or I was so sick I had Crohn's, or I had, you know, uh, you know, diabetes, or, you know, arthritis at my young age, no, nothing like that, just... Uh, but I knew I was getting sicker. I knew I, I, again, I got sick two years in a row, so I, I knew something. I knew I was going downhill. And I thought, you know, why, you know, again, why does this happen? And then I began to realize I'm just putting the wrong things in my body altogether. And that's the next step of what I learned about um, and really one of the best lessons. So I got the two most perfect foods in the world. And, um, and then the next I found out was about enzymes. But he came to me and said, would you like to buy my sprouts that I make and then sell them? So I started eating sprouts of all kinds, and I just real I just thought to myself, okay, now why would I want to eat that? Well, the enzymes, and I knew about that was in the food, and then I realized you don't want to eat cooked foods because it doesn't have any enzymes. And 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 I read a book by this guy Edward Howell, Doctor Edward Howell. Realized everything we do is enzymic reactions. You think, you blink, you walk, you talk. Everything is enzymes, and yet we constantly starve the body of enzymes. So I knew I had to get you know raw foods into my body and that was where the next step came for me that was step number three raw fruits and vegetables I mean it just again it kept coming to me one after another I, I had about, turned about 80 percent raw overnight and I've been at least that ever since but um, I, I was eating about 20 percent rice because I really felt you needed that to fill yourself up and you needed those starchy carbohydrates to give you energy and um, it took me about four years to get get off of rice. Um, not that it's a it's a great way to transition from a cooked food diet into a raw food diet, but uh, I began to really th see that how addictive they were and how I couldn't get off it. But uh, I did, and then I was like close to 90, 100 percent raw, and I've been that way ever since, eating all raw fruits and vegetables. There's a certain way to be a vegan, the way I am, 
and that's when I came up with my my raw food pyramid uh, that whole concept but it's very important to know how to eat as a raw so then I, I found out about um, you know probiotics friendly bacteria for your body There's a lot of people don't believe in these or whatever well there's bacteria throughout your digestive tract and you really uh, you really can't digest your food and keep your digestive tract clean and keep it free of um, yeast mold fungus and foreign bacteria bad bacteria if you don't feed it the friendly bacteria and they're primarily acidophilus and right, that became so. my next health protocol um, I started having a lot better digestion when I started taking um, probiotics. And, uh, my first book, which is called Confessions of a Bodybuilder, it's not about weightlifting. Nobody had written anything about ionized water, spirulina and chlorella, raw fruits and vegetables, and exercising. And it was really the, in probiotics, and it was really the basis of my health protocol right there. That was about the six steps. That was later expanded in another book uh, called Achieving Great Health, and that was really, I had the six components of health, and then finally added the seventh later. But that was how it all started, and that's when it sort of came. No, I used to eat a lot of soy, and I found out that was garbage. So it was, it was little by little that I learned I'm about a health, not I'm a health fanatic, and I admit it. I really am. It's like everything I do, yeah, I do to make myself healthier, because everything you put into your body either is going to make you healthier or make you sicker. Uh, my main goal was just to reach the average person. I want to reach. I don't want to reach the health fanatics because you kind of already got them. But I want to each reach the average person sitting on the couch, the couch potato, who never moves, who doesn't care, who isn't going to stop eating the potato chips. And let's let, just show them you stop eating potato chips and then start eating some kind of fruit, some carrots, or do something else. You can make some simple changes. Start drinking water and the right kind of water, and take spirulina and chlorella, and and uh, just not eat cooked foods so much and just shrink the size of it. Maybe have a big salad before. There's things you could do. So I'm always trying to get to the average person. I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to. I want to reach the masses. And let's put I interviewed that. everybody in the health world I could get my hands on natural health, that kind of thing. Uh, I learned a tremendous about amount about health and what goes on with people and. Well, how they perceive how so I started getting my credentials and I wanted to study more and learn more so I I became um, a certified nutritional consultant uh, a certified master herbalist and eventually a naturopathic doctor and that, all that study took me close to eight years of studying um, to get it all together and get that but in the end the truth is what I know about health is what I've experienced I couldn't tell you anything different I could sit here and try to tell you that all these books taught me something when I when when I the most things I know about an herb is one the one I take myself and I can tell you to take it and here's why though that's the way I I've learned about health Through all this the biggest lesson I learned of any is that Disease does not come from our genes, uh, and we're always led to believe that. I mean, you go to the doctor's office, family history, it's the first thing you do. You don't, they don't let you do anything else. Family history. Do you have cancer in your, you go to apply to jobs, you have cancer, arthritis, you have heart disease that run your family. Oh, and you think, and so we're all convinced we run around and it's like, okay, I'm going to end up like my father. My father had dementia. I'm worried about that. It runs in their family, you know. Dietary habits run in our family. Genes run in our families, but that's for other things, and it has nothing to do with our health. And yet what we hear more than anything else is that um, all disease comes from our genes, and, uh, you, you know, you got the cancer gene, and you got, uh, you know, the brain cancer gene, you got the breast cancer gene, and you've got the arthritis gene, and they're finding all the genes, and how convenient they'd find them. When the body is capable of healing itself of any disease, we just need to stop putting the wrong things into our body and start putting the right things into our body. And that is the number one lesson I can teach you, is that we can take control of our health. And, and that's the most important part. It's a mes message of empowerment. I mean, that's what I'm... You get, you get old, you get sick, and you, do, you die. And that's what happens. I mean, you get a disease. What are you going to die? But we all know we're going to. You know, if we don't get, you know, we don't get killed in an accident or get hit by a bus, you're going to die of something. You're going to die of of cancer. You're going to die of, you know. Sometimes people old they die and they're 98 or they're 114. He died of old age. Old age. Something. Something gave out. People just don't die because they're old.
What I learned was that disease cloaks itself in old in, in old age, or, or I should say it's the other way around. Old age cloaks itself in disease, meaning that as we get older, it's just what well, we think it's it's because of our our age. Well, I got to tell you, I, I mean, I can still run a six minute mile. At 50, I'm 58 right now. At six, I still can work out. I feel fantastic. I'm full of energy. What's going on with me? Why isn't? Why am I not affected by this? Because disease has nothing to do with uh, age. It has to do with our diet and our lifestyle. And if you decide to change those things, you're going to see that uh, disease is going to become a thing of the past. Now, this is a radical message. This is like this is like, you know, guys. I hate to tell you, but the 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 you know the sun doesn't go around the earth. I mean, we're circling the sun, and so are the planets. And we're this is not the way we thought. That's this kind of message. This is the message, and I seriously like screaming in the wilderness sometimes, trying to make people understand um, my message. And my message is simple: um, take control of your health, put the right things in your body. And you'll be healthy. Now, I didn't say that was easy because it's not. I struggle with myself. I've been struggling with it for years and years. There are things and there are people and there are institutions that are definitely standing in my way and your way and everybody's way from understanding what true health is. I mean, first you have, um, you know, the, the, the doctors. I mean, they have their fiefdom and, and they're all, we're all told from day one, the doctors are they know, just follow your doctor's advice they know about health they don't know about health this is the they die at an earlier age than any other profession anyone so I think it's like 58 I mean you have to go down to like uh, you know construction worker and these really tough jo jobs where people really get you know kind of burned out to find a job where you're gonna you know a profession where people are gonna die so early so uh, I mean and doctors should be living the longest so the truth is they don't know anything about health. First of all, health is in one direction, okay, and, and me medicine is in another. They, you know, people say you must argue all the time. There's nothing to argue about. I mean, I've been studying health for years and years and years. I am healthy, and I've been healthy for years and years and years. I mean, again, since I had that problem, I never had a single hiccup. Uh, along the way, as far certainly as any chronic disease, we can talk about the infectious disease I had later, but. Um, I never had these. I never had these problems, and yet here's the medical industry. They can't cure any disease. They haven't cured any diseases of anything. Anybody they can they can make people live a long a little longer, but cure a disease, cure cancer. We hear it's right around the corner. Just a little more money. Just a little more research. So the doctors stand you where the medical profession stands in your way. The pharmaceuticals stands in our way. The pharmaceuticals don't want us to be. I mean, we we took care of our health. There would be no more need for 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 drugs for pharmaceuticals this is uh, I don't need to tell anybody this is a multi-billion dollar year industry and uh, I mean you're not going to stand in these people's way and then the last one you know um, or maybe it's the first one really it's the media they stand in our way they report this and they report what the pharmaceuticals say they report what the medical industry say they report what the doctors say they report what the researchers say. When they say this new set of drugs that's coming out, the Stantons, and it's the Stantons of the next generation of their drugs of tomorrow, these are the ones that are going to be. And if we just, it's always right around the corner. And yet it never happens. And gee, I wonder why. It's because we're never going to find a disease for, a cure for any disease. We're looking in the wrong place. Now the body can cure itself of any disease. Now I can explain to you exactly how to do that in my seven component health protocol. We haven't discussed the whole thing, but that those are the issues that we need to think about and and start thinking in a totally different way. I guess what it comes down to me is honoring the temple that that uh, that God has made for us. Honoring your body, that that the temple of God, and when you do that, you'll be healthy. And when you don't, you get sick. And that is a very simple concept for me. I tell people this business about raw fruits and vegetables. Uh, you know, God grew an apple. We made we made a frying pan. Okay, we're going to make it better. We're going to make we're going to make it taste better. We're going to release the nutrients. Well, the, that's just nonsense. I mean, there's there's no proof or there's of any kind that when you cook something, the nutrients now become 
more bioavailable to the human body because there's there's no proof of it. They'll tell you this: yeah, the car the carotenoids, the car the carotenes, and the carotenoids, and everything in the carrots. You, you got to cook it, and we've got the study, and it's going to be you know you can get a study to prove anything. In the end, uh, who's healthy and who isn't? You know, my blood work um, is was perfect, and it is perfect. My full physical is perfect, and because I had a four-hour physical, four hours, folks. It's just a matter of. Um, taking control of your own health and empowering yourself and really I also say that health is the most important thing in our lives maybe other than our relationship with God because you say well then next is your family well what good are your family if you're sick you're not any good at all you've got to be healthy so you can make earn, earn money for your family so you can support your family so you can be there for your family so you can be there for your kids and your grandkids or whatever so it's the most important thing. You need to take care of yourself so you can take care of them. That's the way I look at it. In the end, what I've learned more than anything is when you follow nature, you'll be healthy. When you go against nature, you won't. That's why pharmaceuticals don't work. That's why pills don't work. That's why medical science doesn't work. Now, I'm going to be clear about something. If I got in, in, injured, I got in a car accident, anything happened to me, of course I'm going to want doctors for those cases. But we're, what I'm talking about, and I want to be clear, is a disease that's where they become useless and that's where you know that's a, where true health takes over and that's where true health begins and that's where true health can tell you show you um, you know what how to be healthy and all that the few health components I have and we'll go over real quickly is water ionized water spirulina and chlorella raw fruits and vegetables and then I said probiotics okay prebiotics that's like fermented foods and then minerals and um, that was I discovered the minerals called angstrom minerals. You take a small amount, put it under your tongue, it goes directly into your body through your sublingual gland. Well, this is that's really uh, the best way to get minerals. But you got to remember every metabolic process in the body depends on minerals. So that became the sick, the the fifth component. And then of course it was vigorous exercise every day, which I always do, and then staying positive. That's number seven. I mean, you got to stay at your at your spiritual life, at your prayer life, it's your it's your um, uh, meditation and and um, and just being a positive person because you got to have it up here. If this is against you, I don't care what else you're doing, you're not going to make it. it, it you'll, this will, this can overcome anything. But this but if you keep eating junk and you got cancer, this isn't going to save you. You know, just being positive isn't going to save you. You really got to have everything together to do that. So everything I promote, I think, in my opinion, it's pretty easy to do. Um, except for one and what I mean is if you can't drink water you know okay people refuse to drink water take spirulina and chlorella okay I take, can't take pills um, raw foods and vegetables you can eat some you don't have to change your diet all all like I did and so radically uh, taking a, a probiotic and a, and a capsule or maybe some powder on your salad or, or some kind of food um, taking some minerals put it in your mouth and swallowing it wait a minute and swallow it exercising a little bit every single day and then staying positive if you can't do those things then what I have is you got a wall in front of you and you just it's this this is what's keeping you from doing it um, and you you won't go past the wall in other words um, you know I just won't take pills well okay there's the wall I mean I won't take I won't take spirulina and chlorella in tablet form okay I, I can't stand drinking water there's the wall I won't eat raw foods I have to have my food there's the wall there's always a wall people put up in front of them and, and it's kind of a sad thing, but that's what they do. And you got to just walk through those walls, and you just say, "I'm going to do this," because you, you know, again, everybody wants to be healthy. Nobody wants to be sick. That's that's what you got to keep telling yourself. Everyone wants to live a long life, and people say, "I don't want to live to be a hundred. But that's because everybody you see when they're a hundred is decrepit. But if you woke up in your hundredth birthday and you felt like a million bucks full of energy you'd say okay what's my next challenge you're not gonna say well I'm a hundred okay I guess and today's the day I'm gonna you know go out and you know walk off a cliff you're not gonna do that you're gonna say what's my next challenge and you're gonna be hey look at what I can do when I'm a hundred you know you guys can't even do it when you're 30 years old look what I'm doing and um, so of course you're gonna want to stay healthy for that and and again this I can show you how to do that it's again following nature it's not that complicated in fact it's so simple it's not even funny it's so simple it's just not easy I will tell you it is not easy thing to do because what do you have to do change your lifestyle change your thinking and change your lifestyle 
And that takes a long time. It took me a long time to change my lifestyle. I'll never go back. I, I, I never go back to the lifestyle of eating cooked foods and, and living that way. Uh, when, on the rare occasion I have some cooked foods now, I feel like I've eaten bricks. And they're just like, oh, my God, I used to eat like this every day. And this is just one small little meal or small little thing or something. So I just don't even go there anymore. And it's taken me a long time. But that's what lifestyle changes do. Um, they're always gradual. And they were the ones that stick, you know, because I've seen people go 100% raw and it lasts a month or three or six and then they go right back. And they're 100% uncooked after that and just cook food. They don't even bother anymore. So the way to go is little, let it integrate into your life and let it become a lifestyle. But I'm going to tell you something. If you come like 30% raw, you're going to feel great. If you actually became 50% raw, so the 50% of the calories you're taking into your body, 50% of the food is actually raw fruits and vegetables. You're juicing, you're making salads, whatever. You'd be really, really healthy and fantastic. You'd feel great. And if you can up that to, to, to 70 and 80, like I'm doing everything, you're going to feel great all the time. I mean, it's really, no one ever, no one ever does this. No one ever gets on my health protocol. And then a month or two later, say, oh, I fell apart. I just felt terrible. You're going to feel maybe not so good at first because you go through a detox. You're getting the stuff that doesn't belong in your body out. What is a toxin? Something that doesn't belong in the body. There are mild toxins, serious toxins. But you're, when you detoxify, the symptoms are headaches, rash, diarrhea, and fatigue. Those can happen to you. And they will happen, especially if you're really toxic. You know, if you don't flush yourself out, if you don't fast, you don't do these things uh, on, a, on a regular basis, for at least from time to time, you know, your digestive tract kind of becomes a museum of old, um, you know, things that you ate months ago and years ago, medications that never got out of your digestive tract. You really become totally something that you were not born to be. And, and then that's where disease comes from. That's why disease creeps into everybody's life. I don't know anybody. Yeah, I'm on my 50s now. I don't know anybody who was on a medication. They're all, everybody's on medication. Everyone. All my friends. Everybody I know. Not me. Never have been. You know, in regards to health, you really become invincible. And that's the about when you get on a diet like I. Just invincible to health. I mean, uh, you don't become Superman. And bullets are still going to hurt you if they hit you. <laughs> but you become impervious to disease. And it's really amazing. It's really, really amazing.